Alrighty, what is going on everybody? Today we're going to be doing a VOD review for our buddy Blaze, who happens to be an Iron Gamer. Um, today we're not going to be going too hard on his abilities. We're going to try to focus on just some key concepts um, to help him mentally improve. Because I believe at the level you're at, even if you don't improve your gun skill, if you just know more than the people you're playing against, um, you'll be able to win a lot more games. Because I feel like just by playing, your mechanics will get better. So we'll focus a lot more on the mental. So right now in this position, one thing I want to talk about is bomb placing, right? Um, the first thing I'm going to talk about is understanding, which it seems like you're fine now. But just for future reference, when you get onto the site, um, a player, a problem that even higher ranked players have up to like silver, gold, maybe even higher, is the second the person with the bomb steps on the site, they instantly want to plant before they know if they have control right the first thing we want to do is we want to fight for control of the site and once we feel comfortable with the control we have then we can go for a plant why because the game is a 5v5 and let's say we enter site without even getting a pick the second you go to plant the bomb you eliminate yourself from that equation and the game now becomes a 4v5 because while you were in the planting animation you cannot shoot your gun you cannot use your abilities, right? So keep that in mind. We don't want to rush too fast um, because let's say, let's say your Neon goes in there and you directly go to plant. She now, if, if she does get in a fight, instead of it being a 2v1, she is now in a isolated fight, which is no bueno, right? Every fight we take, we want them to be 60 to 70% in our advantage um, compared to a 50-50. We don't want 50 50s we want 60 to 70 percent or higher because we want the fight to be on as unfair as possible in our favor because that's how you win games right by increasing your chances by taking two on ones by using utility things like that right and to go off of the whole planting the bomb thing i will create a miniature drawing real quick so we'll, we'll envision that this is the corner when you go to plant the bomb, when you plant, let's say you position yourself in this corner. If you stare into the corner, the bomb will plant here. If you look anywhere else, it could look something like this, right? And we have to understand that for every plant you put down, there is a radius, right? That the bomb can be diffused. So we'll just draw a circle. So for example, Let's say this is the radius. It obviously, I'm sorry, I'm bad at drawing circles, but the, there's walls here, right? So in theory, not in theory, but in 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 reality, the 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 person diffusing can only diffuse from this position. They can't phase through the walls, so it allows you to spam that bomb a lot easier compared to a plant like this which if we were to draw a circle around look at all of this positions that they can diffuse from they can diffuse from here they can diffuse from here they can diffuse these are all these sections they can diffuse from which makes the bomb especially through smokes harder to spam because there's more variation right there's rng in a sense because if, if they're smoked off you don't have that information you have to guess you have to take random shots right so we do want to tuck the bomb into the corner to reduce how many angles they can diffuse from. On to the next topic. We are on our first defensive round, right? You are a controller. So in my opinion, right? Obviously there's roles in the game, but I like to think of the game in two ways. We have um, aggressive characters and we have supportive characters. So if I'm going to look at your team, the two aggressive characters are going to be your ISO and your Neon. The rest of your team is going to be a supportive cast, right? You have different ways to support your team, but you're a supportive cast. So the idea that I have adopted, and I'm pretty sure I got it from someone else, but when I am on a support character, I like to buy light armor and my util. Why? Because nine times out of 10, I'm going to be doing something with my util to assist one of these players. And if they get eliminated, there's a possibility that now I have light armor, right? I got some armor and now I have a gun because my teammate dropped it. So now I'm a real in, in pistol round. 
I'm a really strong character. That's why I like Impista around if you have Arena who doesn't buy armor and a good gun. If they get a pick, right, they now have 150 health and a gun. That's scary. They're 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 a juggernaut at that point, right? So you can kind of like simulate that by buying your armor and your utility. And if the worst case scenario happens and you lose a teammate, there's an opportunity for you to get a gun and kind of equalize in a sense. Um, that's what I like to do. And I think it's a good idea if you're playing a controller or an initiator because your util is really strong. So why not buy your util, right? You're not going to be the first one in. Um, and if, when you go in, even if, you know, if you can't get to the gun, the person that your duelist was fighting is probably low. So you, you're already on an even playing field anyways with your classic. So, yeah. Other than that, um, moving forward right now, you can see that. Your fade through an eye, your ISO is looking to walk up here, right? So I want to enable my team. You don't really have util that you can just throw at the choke. Um, if I were you, I would have been a lot closer and I would have probably thrown a cascade through the wall um, to maybe slow them down. I wouldn't throw it here. I wouldn't throw it here because you don't want to give them room to hide or cross. But by throwing it at the doorway, you can maybe stop it at the doorway. And if they're tucked in that corner because of the eye, maybe... Um, it'll hit them, it'll slow them, disorientate and disorientate their vision a little bit because it has to pass through their screen um, and stuff like that, which may, may give your ISO an advantage as well as you can walk up with him. But right now, you're playing way too far back for his aggression, right? And even if this may seem like a dumb play because you don't have the utility to really dump at that choke, um, it's better to do a dumb play together than to let somebody mess up on their own and now you're at a disadvantage, you know? And then you're like, oh, my ISO through, like... Yeah, but you could have played off him, and maybe you, you you guys could have made a play. But since you don't play off him, you like you let you allow him to make a mistake, and even though he's not um in your control, you're in your control, and you could have chose to help him, but you didn't, right? Not saying that's what you actively were thinking, but I want you to understand that you need to play with your teammates. Sometimes they're gonna make weird decisions. You gotta adapt. For example, if you want to play aggressive, aggressive. And your team doesn't want to go with you there's nothing you can do because at that point you're throwing your life away by taking a off chance that you can maybe win your fight right sometimes you can sometimes you can't but referring to the point we said before we want to take as many fights as we can and we'll use the big boy number 70 percent to 30 right we want to have the 70 and we want the enemy to have the 30 right we we want to have that advantage Life is unfair. At least let's make it unfair in our favor. So yeah, like I said, he fights up. And bam. Eh, now you guys are down one. And another lesson I can get through this. Is. Gotta scratch my ear. Is now you guys are down one. The game is a 5v5. ISO gets eliminated. Right? But there was a trade that happened. So now it's a 4v4. Right? The game may seem even, but you are on defense, right? And on defense, you have to split up. So you guys went 3-1-1, you guys lost two. Now it's a 2-1-1, right? And now you have four attackers who want to run you down. And I, I was never good at math, right? But four is bigger than two. That's more util. That's more firepower, right? So we don't want to put ourselves in a position... Right to where we have to be outgunned. So if I'm you in this position, getting more picks is an option, but they have more tools to fight than y'all do. So personally, I would I would back up. Right? I would allow my team to rotate and I would try to take a fight with my team. At this point in time. What I like to refer to this as is the unknown, right? At this point in time, we don't have any information on this area. The enemies could be anywhere within that area. Your Neon will, will kind of clear this out in a bit. Cypher's coming, but you have a lot of unknown. Yes, there's unknown here, but we know they're, we know they're main right now, so we don't think about all that. Um, so with that being said, I would honestly play closer, whether it be here or here, to my Fade. So that if anything, if I do hear pressure coming up here, I can wall this off, right? And force them to have to use you to do the wall while also still having cover. 
but I'm also in a position position to help my fade because we want to take fights in our advantage. We don't want to take isolated 1v1s if we don't have to, right? So I would play either here or here. All right, you're trying to get information. Right, but look, so now your fade is here, not doing anything. And now you have saw scene two, and you're about to be in an, an engagement, and your team is being very slow. Right? So right now, you are in a very weird predicament. So now you're going to push really hard. Your fade wants to come help you, but now door gets hit. Right? Boom. So now you guys are both in isolated fights on your own, which is no bueno. You don't want to do that, right? Because now it's 50-50, and we don't like 50-50s. Boom. You get eliminated, so does your fade. Unfor. You could have minimized that by playing together. Or if you were closer to her, that raise would have had to deal with both of y'all swinging. So we are jiggling for information here, right? Um, and this is a good point where we can look at the minimap and get information. Nobody has peaked main in, in a good bit. So we can kind of safely say that nobody will be there unless maybe a lurker. So we have to be wary about that because they could do a B split. Um, but your fade has walked all the way out here. We know there's nothing here. Um, these guys should be able to hear this. But So we have information that basically this is all clear. Right, we can assume that this is all clear. Maybe you know one is there, um, so we have to be wary about that. But now we have information that the enemy team is mid, so we need to start um, rotating fast. Okay, so boom, fade pops door, throws an ult, gets one, two, three. This is huge, right? But you make a mistake here, and I understand you're trying to block. B main off so that people can't can't walk onto your team for free. But I want you to think about this. Right? By you walling this off, you not only block the enemy's ability to see into B, but you block your ally's ability to see out of B. Right? And currently there's a fight going on from C door, right? Into B lobby. Right? We'll call it B lobby right so now you deny your team the ability to to eliminate this raise because if we're being honest here right your neon gets this your neon has an eye an angle right but you deny your 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 um your neon of that angle right and what you've done is you've isolated your fade which i don't want to say gets him eliminated but we'll say that in the sense so you can understand the mistake you made right you isolate your fade when he shouldn't have never been isolated right i get the concept of the wall but if you're paying attention to the minimap you understand that by fade opening the door the fade is creating a crossfire which is very good by you walling you split that crossfire and no longer exists right so we have to be wary of things like that i like that you're trying to help your team you had good intentions but you need to use the mini map so when you develop your game set game game sense to kind of understand these concepts you won't isolate your teammates from each other when they have a crossfire all right so you do have your ult this round right so that is an initiation tool so this would have been a good round to pop your ult right and take space so if I were you, something you could do is you could have 4A, 1B, no C, right? Cypher can put, run and put a trip on C and then set up on B so they can play B, be a little bit closer to you guys. Um, and then you guys can just aggressively take A main. If they're not there, they're not there, right? So now you guys can you guys can have an aggressive wrap together. Um, but if they are there, you have neon stuns, neon ult fade um fade dogs fade sucks right on um, fade eye you have iso vulnerables right you have your ult right you have so much utility that you can throw at that choke right so that you can fight for that map control and force them to go somewhere else right so that you can control damn near half the map and then your your your, your cypher will hear that rotation right but you can fight for a main so in situations where you have your ult and you see a lot of people have your ult, obviously you cannot guarantee that people will listen to you, right? But an idea is, hey, I have ult. 
my ult can get us in. We have other ults. We can really fight for this A control. Right? Thanks. This is an idea. So you see three. You throw up a wall here. Fade throws ult. Throw some dogs. You see that they're on your fade. You pop your ult here. You know that they're all in that area. Right? I like this ult. Right? Those things give you information. Boom. And now you have a you have a crossfire. Nice. So this play works out. But hey, we gotta complain because it's coaching. But first off, good job, right? You made a play, you use your ult. I'm proud. But you were inactive for a lot of that fight. You know, you you could have probably been a little bit more proactive because your your team did take a couple fights that you were just like not involved in at all. Right. But good job. Good job on the ult. Good job at having a crossfire, right? Good job. Alrighty, so with those little clips that we discussed, we can now just jump into the notes, right, and go over the three things that I want you to focus on moving forward that I believe if you can kind of get these down, not per not perfect, but get these down, um, you'll be able to definitely climb out of iron, definitely climb out of bronze, right? The goal, right, because I believe that by you just playing more, your mechanics will improve. Uh, the goal should be to know more than the the people that are in your rank so that you're not solely relying on just out mechanicing them um you'll be able to develop mentally be smarter than them better than them which will ultimately climb you out of that rank right so number one is the mini map right the mini map gives you so much information so we got to make sure that we're looking at it right i understand um it's very easy to tunnel vision on what you're um to tunnel vision on the angle that you're watching on what you're supposed to be doing that sometimes you don't want to glance up at the minimap because you're scared someone might swing you or they'll cross and you won't know, right? But at a certain point, you might be holding an angle for too long. You might need to unpeak, look at the minimap and get information, especially if your teammates are not communicating to you. It's different if you have people that are willing to speak to you and give you that information without you having to look because let's be honest, not everybody's going to be holding an individual angle right but let's just assume we don't have that um there's going to be times where you are going to need to get, need to gather info so let's say you're holding a main no one's peaked in five seconds they might not be there unpeak look at your mini map okay how is my team doing are they pushed up are they pushed back and if everything looks like it started maybe the enemy team's just playing extremely slow and you did give up your angle for a bit so now you need to have the mentality, hmm, somebody could have probably crossed. I need to play with the assumption that someone is deeper now or in a position that I may not be aware of, right? Um, so, yeah, make sure we're using that mini-map. Number two, util should have a purpose, right? I don't want you throwing stuff just to throw it. As much as I want you to, to, to use your abilities, find out in which ways it's right or wrong, right? I want you to do that, but I also want you to have a reason right so we'll use your 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 walls your your smokes on harbor as an example if you're smoking something off why are we smoking it off right the enemy has angles on us that i don't want them to have i need to cut off their los right my teammate is in a position that is not good for him he wants to get out so i'm going to give him cover right or maybe um I can isolate this part of the map to enable me to clear an angle that may have somebody, which will allow me to isolate a 1v1 that I need to take here instead of having to um, be exposed to multiple angles all at once. Um, or yeah, um, I could go into more examples with other abilities, but we'll just, we'll stop at that, right? Just try to have a reason why you're using something. It doesn't have to be perfect. I would much rather you have a bad reason of why you're using something than to just randomly use it and it get wasted and you don't learn anything, you know, compared to, hey, I want to block off this angle because I feel like it's dangerous for them to have. And then you realize, hmm, I didn't really need to block that off. Okay, I know that for next time, right? Right. So number three, we need to understand number advantage and how that affects how you play, your play style, your game plan, right? 
So if we are on defense, I'm pretty sure I discussed it, but I'll say it again if I didn't. It's a 5v5 game. On defense, if we lose a player, that's very bad because we have to control the entire map, right? The attackers can go wherever they want. They can 5-stack um, A. They can split and go A, B. They can do a default and be everywhere. They're not limited to specific portions of the map, right? But using Lotus as an example, as defenders, you don't want to risk not holding something and them and them happening to just sprint there and now they get it for free. And now they have the bomb down in the perfect position. They have every angle that they could want, right? We would rather split up, right? So that we can get information and then switch and play accordingly. So on defense, 5v5, to justify any loss, we need to get two for every one, right? On offense, it's different. To justify a loss, we just need an equal equal loss for the enemy team, right? And with that being said, let's say we're on defense. They're on offense. They get a pick, and we do not. We are now at a disadvantage. To equalize that, we need to get two picks. How can we do that? Taking ratty angles, taking fights, you know, being aggressive, or maybe grouping up if the enemy's not fully grouped up and trying to take fights that way right but we need to try to equalize that right which would be getting two picks right so understanding how oh how how it affects your play style in a sense could be like hey we're down i need to go find a way to get a pick i need to be i need to flank i need to do this i need to do that i need to peek this angle right and just have a better understanding of what that means but with all of this being said i know for a fact if you can get these three thousand these three things down not perfect them but get them down It'll definitely help you climb. And for anybody else who was looking to rank up, learn a few things, or just have a game reviewed, uh, don't be afraid to comment down below or jump on my Discord so we can get in contact, so we can get you set up with a coaching session, right? It's your boy Apache. I'll see you in the next one. Take care and peace.